Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're just going to informally go through a bunch of different weapons that have changed because there's so many little tweaks that have been made. Originally when BSG were putting through these recall changes, to start with they just slapped the same on everything and the horizontal got removed on a lot of different guns, all the different guns pretty much that go full auto. Whereas now they've been tweaking around with a few different weapons so it's worth having a look at some of these just to see exactly what has happened. And the first one that I want to start with is the G36 because as we know the G36 used to not be very good at all. This one had some real problems especially with ergo but now if we go and have a look at some of the changes and this one has had 12 ergonomics added to its base ergo pretty much so that means that no matter what you do on each build you're going to have 12 more ergonomics than you would have previously which is pretty cool so the original g36 comes with about 50 ergo and 74 vertical recoil but you can't put on a vertical foregrip because it's the long barrel version and the six vent so this is the six vent handguard and the 480 mil barrel now the way the g36 works is each vent goes with its respective barrel so there's three barrel ends and there's three vents there's a six vent a four vent and a two vent so once you take off that then you're able to put these other ones on so we've got a short version and a medium version now i really like the medium version build but the problem with it is that you can't buy this until Peacekeeper 4, which is a bit of a pain. And once you're at Peacekeeper 4 and that high level, you probably won't really be using the G36. So what I think we're going to do instead is swap over to the shortest version. So this actually gives us the least problems in terms of ergonomics, but let's just build it back up. So we've got the gas block to put back on, hand guards, we've got the two vents to put. Then we've got to put on the G36 bottom rail, which we'll put here. And then under that, I think what we're going to do on most of these builds is go for something very similar. So we're going to go for the RVG Black in this particular instance. You can go for this one. It is slightly cheaper, but it's FDE instead kind of ruins the aesthetic. I think that one's what, $72 and this one is $83. So if you want to get a little bit of cheapness, you can go for the, the tan version. So from here, there's not really much else you can do with this weapon. In terms of the stock, there is actually this other stock that you can get, which is six recoil for six ergo. I'm always a little hesitant to do it, just simply because it's 14k that we don't have to spend. Plus the G36, ergo is normally more of its issue rather than recoil. The recoil profile isn't actually too bad, but we add this and we end up adding half a kilogram of weight and we only... We only get six recall for the privilege of taking away six ergonomics. So you can do this if you want to, but I think I'm just going to leave it off for the time being. Then in terms of this top rail, we're going to change over to this one, the G36 sight mount, because again, I think the G36 flip up is slightly lighter, but you can't get this one until a high level of mechanic as well. So we're going to go with this guy, not that it makes that much difference. And then we will put on the XPS 3.0, which is the one that we're going to be using on all of these guns. Now, usually with these guns and the ones that have issues with ergonomics with suppressors, I normally stick to the mini monster, which is an SF3P and a mini monster on top of that. And this is the one that's got the, the barter for the VHS tape, which we can go and see in here. I mean, they're, they're really cheap at the moment. It's only 33K. There's a VHS tape barter down here with Skier 3. And the VHS tapes sometimes are cheaper. At the moment, they're really expensive, actually. So it's just cheaper to buy one off the flea market. So there we go. We've now got 63.5 ergonomics and 68 vertical recoil, which really isn't half bad. That does actually feel pretty good. And because we've got such good ergonomics, maybe you could even think about putting on a different suppressor or something. It's up to you. But anyway, let's stick with the mini monster for the time being. So I've built one of these already, which is this one here in our inventory. 63.5 ergo and 68 recoil. As you can see, it's got the, the regular stock. We're just going to go and fire this. It is quite aggressive. When you try and go in the hideout and you try and shoot it, it is, it is a pretty aggressive gun to try to control. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. You have to pull down quite heavily and then it'll stabilize like all the other guns do. So that's controlling it. It does get a little bit wild towards the end. Let's just show what it looks like if I just say shoot at this back target at the bottom and not do anything. Now, one interesting thing you can see with the spray pattern, how it goes up and down and up and down like this. The G36 actually has very similar horizontal recoil to the SCAR. So it's actually got top tier horizontal recoil control, which means that that's why the spray pattern at the end, even though it's a bit wild, it just goes in a straight line. So if you can control that, then it stays on target really, really quite well. Whether this build is a little bit expensive for something like the G36, I'm not sure. That's up for you to decide. The next one that I think we should talk about really is the org. So on the org, we've got, got this version here. I'm not going to go through the full build for this because I have a video for that on my channel already. And it's relatively straightforward. Um, I don't know. This is always like slightly offset in this menu. It's very weird. 
But either which way, so we've got an A3 here. You can take the A1 and do a conversion instead, but you get slightly worse statistics. But what they've done with this, again, I've gone for a mini monster build because the, the org has some more problems with ergonomics, but otherwise it's basically the same thing. SF3P, mini monster, and an XPS03. The, the org's horizontal recoil has been decreased multiple times though. So it used to have really bad horizontal recoil as if it was some kind of SMG, like the Vector or something like that. But now it's a lot better. So let's just see what it's like. I'm just, let's, let's not compensate it to begin with and we'll just see. So you can see it's quite a bit more controllable than the G36. Let's go and just try to control it on target. So it's a lot more bouncy side to side, but the vertical recoil is less. So it really depends on what you want. I think the AUG is probably cheaper to put together too than the G36. So it's really your choice. I mean, if you can deal with a bit of side to side spray and that you may miss your target here. I mean, yeah, let's just have a look at this spray pattern here. You may actually miss at this, at this distance. It's, it's kind of on target, but a couple of them go over the shoulder and stuff. It's like they, they bounce up and it makes it very difficult. To me, this basically feels kind of like the MDR, but with less ergonomics. So if you if you like the MDR, then you'll probably like the way that the org feels now. The, these two guns actually feel pretty pretty close at this stage. You know, this has got 61 vertical recoil, and this one that I built has got 55. So maybe the org does just pip the MDR a little bit in terms of vertical, but the MDR has got really, really nice ergonomics. Although this one's got an RC2 on it, which is why the ergo is uh, a little bit lower on this version. But yeah, it's, it's up to you really. I think I think the org might actually be a decent budget choice for 5.56 at this point. All right, so moving on, we're going to look at the MCX. Now the MCX, I keep banging on about time and time again. Actually, let's look at the build first. So this version that I've built here, all I've done is I've left the stock as is. I've changed over to an OMRG pistol grip. I've left on the handguard as is as well. I bought this one from the flea market and we've just attached, it already had the T-lock on it and it had the, the two port muzzle brake, which is the two best parts that you need before you get the SRD QD suppressor. And this is the one that fits onto that combination. And it's either about 40K ish on the flea market or there is another barter for this one. Um, which you could get a skier for. You can't see it here, but this one is for a Raven. So I can't do this one yet. So I'm just buying these from the flea. But there's not actually that many choices for the 300 Blackout Assault Rifle at the moment, simply because they're just not compatible with a lot of the other 5.56 suppressors for some reason. I'm not sure whether that's like, it is a real life, but it is in the game. You really don't get much choice, especially with this particular barrel. The, the shorter one you can do some other things with, but again, it's, it's very limited. Either which way, we've got 47 ergonomics, which is not really that amazing, and 59 vertical recoil. We'd have to spend a lot more money if we were going to go and start adding this stuff on. And like this was that sold out from Peacekeeper, the telescopic adapter, to allow us to put on a real stock. So I've just kind of left it as is. But this has had a couple of different boosts, actually. So you can't see it here, but if I was to strip back, we may as well do it, actually. So when we strip back the entire gun, we get to the beta recoil, as always. And this is what dictates really the overall recoil of the weapon. And because Tarkov's system is additive, it means that each part that you put on, no matter which order you put it on in, it changes the vertical recoil in exactly the same way. And so what that means is that this base number here, 155, that number is the one that is always being used when you're looking at a different mod. If it's got 3% vertical recoil reduction, it'll use this 155. Now this was 159 originally. And that's got that's been buffed. And so what that means is that the MCX builds now just have four more, or well, they have four more recoil reductions. So they have four less recoil than they used to, which is actually pretty cool. So that adds a little buff. Then in terms of the ammo, just going quickly whip into the hideout because now we have to build it in here. So this ammunition, the Blackout AP, which is really the one that I think you should use it with. I might try using the M62s just to see. It's very similar to 5.6A1 for 5.56, but with a bit more damage. But anyway, with Blackout AP, it's very, very good because this is kind of similar to BP, 7.62 BP in many ways. This now only has plus three recoil, which is down from plus 10. So you've actually got some recoil benefit from the rounds as well as some recoil benefit from the weapon too. And then on top of that, you've got the changes that have been made in the latest patches with horizontal recoil. And this thing always used to have quite bad horizontal recoil and that got buffed originally and then it got buffed again and it's been tweaked to be buffed a, a little bit further. And so now I think this thing, it feels like a lot of the other the other weapons. It's it's a fast fire rate. So again, it's slightly accentuated, but let's just see. So without, without controlling for it at all, we'll just see what it looks like. So it's kind of similar to some of the others, but you can you can feel the faster fire rate on this weapon. Let's try and control it. 
Now, this is a lot better than it used to be. It used to have a super wild horizontal, um, but it is actually pretty usable now, and that fast fire rate is pretty cool. Maybe you want to use it with a slightly bigger magazine. The MCX, I was always a bit of a fan of using it with the 40 rounders, so I might try that because of the, the faster fire rate. It does make it quite difficult to actually not just run out of bullets before your opponent, so maybe the 40s and use one of the, the new rigs or something like that, but yeah, I think it's a potentially a, a good option. Right, next up, let's look at the AK-103. So the AK-103, uh, this guy is on the flea market for a pretty cheap price, doesn't cost very much, because it doesn't get the top tier muzzles like the AKMs. There's only so much that you can do with it because you can't get the 308 adapters for it. So if you want to build unsuppressed builds, I feel like the AK-103, if you're going 762, is one of the better options. You have the RRD here. This is quite high level traders uh, on Mechanic 3. And the main problem is, is that if you want to go suppressed, these aren't really very good, to be honest with you. So I quite like going RRD on this once you get to Mechanic 3. Now, if you want to build out some relatively straightforward build for it, do the butt pad once you've got the correct levels with Gunsmith, because this takes Gunsmith Part 6 these days. Take off the sight and put on the Bastion as usual. Now, the one thing that I always love doing once you've got Mechanic 3 again, like this is a slightly higher level build, I suppose, is this VDMCS gas tube. I always talk about this every wipe. VDMCS gas tube is the only gas tube that this particular handguard fits onto, the UFM Krebs. And this is one of the few handguards that has minus 3% recoil on it. And because it's slightly complicated and only fits on that one particular gas tube, it's always really cheap on the fleet because every wipe, everybody forgets about it. So onto that, we're going to add a rail and we're gonna put on an RVG Black again, as we always do. And then, yeah, we'll just add on a sight like an XPS. And that gets us to 64 ergo and 67 vertical recoil, which really isn't that bad. So we've got one of these right here. This one's got 70 ergo because why has this got 70 ergo? Maybe I forgot to add something. I don't know. But let's go and just fire this thing. And it this thing's got really, really tight horizontal spread now. It's been buffed quite significantly and it feels amazing to fire. So let's just fire it and we'll just see how it feels. See, now with the slow fire rate, it is very, very, very controllable. And this is with PS. This isn't with BP. But I think you might be quite surprised. I was quite surprised using this weapon in the hideout just to see how controllable it is. And let's let's pull down and control it. Like it's it's more lasery than something like the MCX or the Org. Really, it's uh, quite quite impressive. I think this thing could be a very good contender. Stick a couple of rounds of BP in that, and it could be amazing. So what this leads us on to is the the final one, which. I think is going to be absolutely insane. And I might do a full video about this particular gun. I've done one on a couple of different wipes, but it's the AK-101. So this has been getting some attention, as you can see, because it's pretty expensive on the flea. You can get it from Mechanic for 43K. Not too bad, but we can do pretty much the exact same build. So we can do, oh yes, it was the pistol grip on the previous build. We needed to put down something like the Tango Down on. So if we use Tango Down, again, I'm going to go with the VDM CS tube and the UFM, the rail, and the RVG Black is best bang for buck, really. Now, this guy, you can actually get the CNC Warrior. So you can actually do other stuff with this thing. You don't need to go with the RRD. If you do go with the RRD, it's very, very cool. And we'll just put the Bastion on and we'll show that with the little, the little optic, with the XPS. That gives us 70 ergonomics and 48 vertical recoil, which is super good. It's super, super, super good. Which version do we have here? Yes, so this one, we actually went for an Ultra 5. So let's let's go with that. Let's go with that. So what I did was we went with the CNC Warrior. And on here, we went with a Thunder Beast muzzle attachment. Let me just find this. Here it is, and the 223CB. And onto that, we have the Ultra 5. Now, these are not actually super expensive. They're a little bit pricey. There is a barter for these, which is Tegilla's cap plus two of the leather caps. And sometimes the boss cap is, is kind of cheap. That's not too bad. Like I'd probably buy them around 10. If you can buy them around 10K, then that's pretty good because the leather caps are usually about 10-ish. I bought some leather caps under 10 earlier. So we'll, we'll hold off on that. But this version now has 47 ergonomics and 44 vertical recoil. Is suppressed with one of the decent suppressors. Obviously this isn't best in slot or anything, but it's still, it feels amazing. So we're, we're going to show this one. That's the one that I've got here, 47 and 44. And we will first obviously fire it like we usually do in the hideout without controlling it, just so we can show, and then we will control it. But this thing, is, it's a laser, and it's the horizontal recoil, just for the record, it's been buffed, so it's basically like the scar, uh, which makes it crazy. So here we go. Damn, it's so good. It's so good. All right, let's just control it one time, and then we'll... Uh... So 
So you can get most of the magazine onto some of these kind of shoulders and head area. It's not that hard, even at this distance, which is pretty cool. And it still has relatively decent ergonomics, even with a suppressor on. And this isn't the best suppressor combination by any means. You could also, in theory, let me just move this over here. If you really wanted to get more ergo out of this, you could always just do the same trick as you do with the other weapons, SF3P, because it's 5.56 ultimately. So you use SF3P and then a mini monster. Now you've got 64 ergonomics and 53 vertical recoil. If you think you don't need it to be in the 40s and it controls well enough anyway, then here you have something that actually is by all, by all means a really good ergonomic gun and it has a suppressor too, so it means you're nice and quiet, so you get a bit of the best of both. So I hope that you enjoyed a slightly more informal video. A big shout out to all my patrons and as always, have fun in your raids.